Welcome to AM Best Audio. Social inflation continues to test the ability of casualty insurers with unpredictable and excessive claim costs. I'm John Weber for AM Best TV. Here to discuss a new AM Best report looking at the issue is David Blades, Associate Director, Industry Research and Analytics, and Justin Amon, Associate Analyst. And David, how did we get to this point where social inflation has become such a negative driver for the insurance industry? Well, John, I don't think we can kind of point to just one specific catalyst for you know how we've got here. I think the, the rise of social inflation and the impact that it's having on casualty claims and casualty insurers has happened, you know, over time. I think, you know, from initially, you know, what we saw was this a reflection of shifting social and cultural attitudes um, towards corporations uh, in general, whereas a lot of people in the general public and, and definitely, uh, you know, attorney firms are looking at corporations in terms of having deep pockets. So when they're considering, you know, when, when people are, you know, they have claims or they file claims and they they look at corporations and the possibilities, you know, of these claims. They're looking at, you know, the deep pockets of the corporations and, and figuring that, hey, you know, somebody has to pay for my my misfortune. And the the attitudes and the expectations uh, of those particular pay, payments, you know, are, are going up. Um, one, I guess you could call it a catalyst over the last few years. When you look at, you know, what happened, you know, the onset of COVID-19 COVID and the coronavirus, Second half of 2020, we saw a lot of television and radio um, legal advertising in terms of, um, you know, kind of presenting the public with any, you know, problems they might be having and are they directly related, uh, you know, to the coronavirus or, you know, what companies are doing uh, in reflection to uh, COVID-19. And a lot of that led to lawsuits and increase in lawsuits over the second half of the year. Um, and a lot of it probably was attributable um, to that particular catalyst. But I think over time, we've seen, you know, like I said, the changing attitudes uh, towards corporations. We've seen the erosion of tort reform in, in a number of states. Um, we've seen just a change in overall attorney tactics in terms of attorneys getting involved in claims quickly. And, and again, increases in their legal advertising. So we've seen some of these things that are reflective of of the overall factors that are attributable to social inflation having you know a greater impact on insurers and how they're looking at their long tail in particular the long tail lines of coverage their li general liability and commercial liability etc so casualty lines seem to be the ones that are most affected what do you suppose that's all about well i think just overall the the you know the effect of you know social inflation Really, what we're seeing and, and what that effect is, is higher volatility and greater uncertainty for insurance companies when they're looking at their casualty lines of coverage. So as they look at um, their casualty claims and their overall portfolio, the fact that litigation funding and uh, third party litigation funding and social inflation, the impact that these types of things are having on that book of business is causing greater uncertainty. And so what you see from the insurance companies is they are, you know, they're, they're really putting more reserves away until more of these settlements come through and they get more reliable data on which they can then rely uh, from a going forward perspective in terms of how they're gonna, gonna address these lines of business. Um, what we did see in looking at the different lines of business is that for um, general liability, and, and in particular for umbrella and excess liability, for commercial auto liability in particular, uh, and even for professional liability, including medical professional liability, we saw that the increase in severity that we've seen and how it's been trending over the recent years, it's been trending for some of those lines. It's been slightly above economic inflation for some of them. The trend lines for the severity has been has far outpaced economic inflation. So that's been reflective of other factors at play, um, you know, having an impact on, on these overall claims and then obviously on from an insurance company perspective on what they on what they can do with it. Um, you know, you also look at, like I said, greater attorney involvement and more, more quick attorney involvement in cases and the fact that that's increasing expenses for insurance companies and also just, you know, increasing some of the overall settlements. We've also seen, you know, the impact of nuclear verdicts, verdicts that are 10 million and more. I think what we've seen is that that increases the expectation that some people have in terms of the potential payments that they may 
you know, they may be able to get uh, from some of these cases over and above just being indemnified for their medical injuries, but payments they, they might be able to get for pain and suffering. And I think that's what's blown some of these claim trends out of the water in terms of what we're seeing. And again, these are the trends and these are the factors that insurance companies are having to deal with. And as I mentioned earlier, just the erosion of tort reform, whereas in some cases, in some states, there were caps on the non-economic damages, the pain and suffering that have been put in place. There's been challenges to a lot of these caps in, in different states where they've ended up being repealed or there's more fighting going on from a legal perspective. So it's one thing that's good from an industry standpoint is that we, the last um, AMBEST loss reserve review looked, and, and even despite some of these negative trends, we looked at general liability and medical professional liability in particular. And those, those lines do seem to be reserved from an industry perspective, uh, from a solid standpoint. Commercial auto liability was the one that, that seems to be deficient in terms of its, uh, its reserve base. And again, the factors of social inflation are definitely impactful there. Customize your data experience. Best Link now offers an interactive company dashboard that provides company-level intelligence in a fast, user-friendly interface featuring interactive tables, charts, and Sparkline performance histories. Customize the dashboard tiles to prioritize the insurer ratings, data, and analytics that best support your workflow. AM Best. Our insight, your advantage. Justin, is there anything the insurance industry can do to combat the increased use of third-party litigation funding or some of these other social inflation triggers? Uh, yes. Well, there there has been efforts to combat these triggers, um, third-party litigation funding in particular. Uh, there, in 2021, the litigation funding transparency bill uh, was introduced in both chambers of U.S. Congress, which requires disclosure of these third-party financing agreements and federal civil lawsuits. Um, the bill aims to shed light on the billion dollar industry that is third party litigation funding um, and also aims to have the courts and opposing parties know who is financing these agreements and whether or not there's a conflict of interest at hand. Um, additionally, there have been industry led initiatives to promote alternative dispute methods such as arbitration and mediation. Uh, as a means to drive down litigation costs and delays. And with respect to some other social inflation triggers, such as nuclear verdicts, uh, companies have been turning to technology, uh, such as artificial intelligence, uh, data-driven software to help identify certain risks. And in respect to the, to the trucking industry as a whole, there have been efforts such as installing drive cameras or um, looking into the future of self-driving vehicles as a way to um, prevent social inflation and the effects of it. Can companies at least plan for social inflation if not mitigate it altogether? Yes. Um, one big way to help mitigate social inflation is through data analysis and monitoring. Um, regularly analyzing claims data can help identify patterns and trends related to social inflation. Um, which then can help identify uh, these emerging risks that companies are facing and help them adjust their strategies uh, accordingly. Uh, but I do want to go back to sort of what I was talking about with third-party litigation funding. And one of the most impactful ways to avoid um, litigation costs and delays is, is to avoid litigation entirely. So the way to do this is through early claims resolution. This allows companies to resolve and identify cases that have the potential to go nuclear and reach a nuclear verdict and drive down the costs and expenses significantly. Um, now, a pre-litigation settlement is not always possible. So a defense team having a defined strategy heading into a trial or court is a great way to have the jury focus on the matter at hand and the theme that they want to convey at trial because what, one of the things I actually talked about in our report is anchoring, um, which the plaintiff attorneys is a tactic they use to try to set an exorbitant dollar amount at the start of trial that gets the jurors focused on a certain figure that they relate to. And battling anchoring is something that can help largely drive down some of the settlements and the um, 
in the large nuclear verdicts by exposing to the jury that this is simply a psychological tactic that attorneys are using to get them to focus on and then presenting a counter anchor in a way that doesn't concede liability to the defense, but just a more uh, reasonable way of assessing the damages of what the claim and case at hand. Thanks, Justin. David. Thank you, John. Thank you. That was David Blades, Associate Director, Industry Research and Analytics, and Justin Amon, Associate Analyst. You can find the full report online at ambest.com. For AMBest TV, I'm John Weber. Looking to get the full attention of the insurance industry? We have the platforms that will do just that. Whether it be AM Best TV, AM Best Audio, Best Review Magazine, or Best Day. Find out more by calling AM Best Advertising Sales at 908 439 2200, extension 5399, and have a great day.